So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Trauma Chats video on camera edition. Back on your screens, I wanted to get all done up today for really no reason, but here I am. So by the title of this video, we're gonna be talking about Drake being a sore loser. I'm sure most people know what exactly is going on and how we got here, but I do wanna break this down a little bit and then also give my opinion. So as we know, Drake and Kendrick Lamar really went at it. Like this was one of the best rap battles that I've ever seen. I'm a 90s baby, but a 2000s kids so to me I had never seen rap battling like this in my lifetime or at least my adulthood I should say where I'm able to like really listen to the lyrics and then hear one side then hear the other side I feel like this was like for us in Gen Z this was our like East Coast versus West Coast in a way and I was here for it you know I'm someone who's really into rap music of course I love more female rap but I really do listen to everybody especially something viral and definitely something mainstream like this like two heavy hitters going back to back they were going back to back no pun intended so so everyone basically declared Kendrick Lamar as the winner because not only was he more consistent with the stuff that he was putting out, but he was hitting like below the belt. His lyrical composition was literally like out of the world. And I think he was the underdog who really became the top dog. Nobody expected Kendrick Lamar to drop Not Like Us or Euphoria. Nobody expected even some of the songs that came before that, some of the collaborations. And I feel like Drake took a very like Drake approach to everything. He thought that, okay, I'm just gonna be myself. I'm going to be talented because he is talented. Talented, and that's just going to work when in reality you can never underestimate your opponent because when Kendrick came he came so the internet social media rap music listeners fans of hip-hop pretty much deems Kendrick Lamar as the winner and we thought that that was it I mean we haven't really heard from Drake in a while of course he's been dropping music but Kendrick Lamar just has had a great year he's going to be the headliner at the next NFL Super Bowl in February 2025 and he also just recently dropped an album so it's like really looking good for Kendrick and I'm not saying that Drake is bad or doing bad but I do feel like Drake right now is kind of like the other you know the other choice like people are obviously going to always be Drake fans but when it comes to this rap battle we definitely look at Drake with a little bit of a side eye now that we know a lot more and now that we realize that somebody who has always been heralded as one of the best talents in the game has kind of been taken down a notch by Kendrick Lamar so news broke that Drake was suing Kendrick Lamar but he actually isn't suing Kendrick Lamar he actually is putting out a petition that could be a lawsuit eventually towards the music label and Kendrick Lamar and Drake do have some type of commonality with music labels. Although they're both signed to two different music labels, they have distribution deals or are signed with UMG as a music label. And basically what Drake is trying to say is that through the whole rap beef with Kendrick Lamar and his success and how much his song went viral and how many streams it got and how many downloads it got and basically what led to his demise was all fueled by bots, by the music label just doing things behind the scenes to push that and basically paint Drake in a bad light which ultimately made him the loser and overall it makes him a sore loser so I just wanted to get into some of this because I do have opinions and I think it's really interesting how the tables have turned and now we have this reverse uno card on Drake where he's calling out a label for using tactics that all labels use even YouTube all big entities use to push a lot of their big name creators or rappers or whoever is in the entertainment and that's a problem for him even though it's been benefiting him so I wanted to talk about it and hear y'all's opinions. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So I did see a video on YouTube and it is by the creator, I think it's Zevi. And I just wanted to kind of go through his whole video because this is exactly breaking down everything and then I'm going to give my opinion. So let's start with that. Real quick, here's what you gotta know about the Drake lawsuit. For starters, it's not a lawsuit, it's a petition. All right, listen closely. See, Drake is signed to a record label called Republic Records. Kendrick Lamar is signed to a record label called Interscope Records. Both of these record labels are owned by Universal Music Group. Now, what Drake is saying is that Universal Music Group, since it owns both him and Kendrick Lamar's music, favored Kendrick Lamar over Drake during their rap beef. Why? Well, here's where it starts to get wicked. See, Drake is in contract negotiations with Universal Music Group, but Universal Music Group had a problem. Drake made them a lot of money. So now Drake's basically like, you see how much I'm worth Universal Music Group. For my next contract, I need that. Y'all better give me that money. They said, how much you want? He said, a lot. Now while all this is going on, the Kendrick and Drake beef thing happened. So Drake says, Universal Music Group amplified Kendrick 
to ruin Drake's career. Let me pause right there. So as he said, this is not a lawsuit, this is a petition. And Drake is saying that UMG basically amplified Kendrick Lamar's success throughout all of the rap battle to basically ruin Drake's career. And he's basically trying to chalk it up to, hey, I was making y'all a lot of money. We were in contract negotiations for me to get even more money. And in the midst of that happening, this happened, which basically lowered my stock. And I don't know if it's that Universal Music Group doesn't wanna pay him or they're re-evaluating how much to pay him. I'm gonna go with that because essentially his stock did go down. His fandom, people revering Drake as the best to ever do it. And just kind of his reputation definitely went down. And I feel like from a business end, anybody would look at that and they would renegotiate numbers. So then during the contract negotiations, Universal could be like, oh, you're not worth that much now. Exactly. You look terrible in front of the media. We'll give you this much. And Drake claims they basically did this through botted plays, giving Kendrick Lamar more plays like fake streams through Spotify. He claims that Spotify might be in on this too. Like Let me stop right there again. So I have done my research. I watched Lovely T's video, shout out to her. And I watched King of Reed's video, shout out to him. I love both of their channels. And the whole thing with Drake accusing Spotify of faking streams or using bots to increase plays and people's focus on Kendrick Lamar is very interesting because in both of their videos and also from my research, Research, I did see that when Drake was dropping his albums back in like 2016, 17, 18, Spotify definitely gave Drake a very big push. And I know that Spotify does have like the ability to kind of put people in more placements for a playlist. This is just like your classic, basic understanding of like payola or pay for advertisement, which I don't think is exclusive to UMG, let alone any label. Everybody does this and it happens right here on YouTube as well. Again, to make it look like Kendrick is doing better than he actually is and to make Drake look bad. Now, here's the problem. Remember how I told you this is not a lawsuit? This is a petition? Well, that means Drake doesn't have an insane amount of evidence. What he's basically saying is courts tell Universal Music Group to give me the evidence because I, Drake, know it happened. I heard it from ex-employees. I saw it on Academic Stream, blah, blah, blah. Tell Universal Music Group to tell me who did it. They don't have to be the ones who did it, but someone in their company did. So who am I suing? So let me stop it there again. I think that is so interestingly wicked because essentially you have no evidence. So you're making someone of an accusation without any like concrete way to say this person did it or this entity did it. And I think this is why he's being called a sore loser because at the end of the day, what happened was the fans, music listeners, people that just wanted to get in on the beef, this was very viral when it first happened, literally pushed that song. Not Like Us became like a staple hit. Like this is a song that I think we're gonna play forever. You know, when it comes to hip hop, there was a dance to it. It was a little bop sound. Not only did that song do well, but leading up to that song was a build up for that song to explode. So I feel like what Kendrick Lamar actually did was he used all of that build up from dropping those records, the Like That song that he did with Future and Metro Boomin, as well as other songs that were a part of this whole entire beef saga to really hone in on the fact that he was saving his best hit for last. I just finished watching season one of Attack on Titan and I kind of feel like this was Aaron Yeager at the end of the battle. Like he knew that the female Titan was stronger or bigger or like more invincible, right? But towards the end, he definitely had to come and kind of just find it within him to say, nah, you're gonna get one last hit. I've gone back and forth with you a few times, but at the end, what happened? When the female Titan tried to climb out of the wall, right? He basically woke up, transformed and said, nah, I'm gonna get you. And that's exactly what Kendrick Lamar did. So let's continue. Oh, and by the way, y'all, I've only gotten to season one. My boyfriend is the one who put me onto anime. He's super into it, but please no spoilers because I do want to watch the rest of the series. Now, Universal Music Group responds to Drake by saying, yo, this ain't got nothing to do with us. If you want to sue somebody, sue Kung Fu Kenny. The fans choose which song becomes popular, and that's actually very important because Universal Music Group is saying, yo, People just like the songs better, broski, let it go. But the fans fully choosing the music might not be entirely true. Universal Music Group and Spotify are like this. They're locked in. It's been known for a long time that streaming companies favor record label artists. A record label says, yo, push this person out. The streaming company might put them on a few more playlists. Drake understands this, so he's putting Universal Music Group in a tough position because Kendrick Lamar very well might have had his plays increased but so does every other artist under record labels. 
So yeah, I think that this goes on more than we think it does. Like there's a lot of artists that have benefits through their labels and the partnerships with streaming networks such as Spotify that helps them to propel a lot more views, sales and plays. Like it is what it is. I'm telling y'all as somebody who is on the inside of some of this stuff, I know it and I see it. So Kendrick Lamar very well could have had his streams boosted, but at the end of the day, the impact of the song is really what was damaging to Drake. It really wasn't necessarily just the number because we're so focused on the numbers and saying that somebody went number one or they had this many streams or this many sales which that doesn't necessarily measure talent but when you look at the talent of it all anybody who's a hip-hop fan anybody who really was paying attention knows that Kendrick cleared whether his songs would have did great or not we know that Kendrick cleared so for Drake to put that pressure on UMG to say I want to know who did this you're tied in with Spotify so I want to know even though Drake himself has also benefited from that it really is the pot calling the kettle black like for real kind of like massive influencers having some fake followers. You can assume that there's some fake followers, right? But Drake's yes. just claiming Universal Music Group did it excessively for Kendrick to make him look bad. Now, this is a massive risk for Drake. The only way Drake wins this is if it comes out that most of Kendrick Lamar's streams were botted and you have to like Drake again. Because remember, this is about label negotiation. If people say, yo, Kendrick, you botted your streams, not cool. But we're still not listening to you, Drake. Then his record label is gonna be like, well, we're not gonna pay you. People still don't like you. But it gets worse, because remember, I said that's if people find out that Kendrick botted his streams. What if Kendrick didn't buy his streams? One, people are not gonna like him even more. So the label is definitely not gonna pay him. And two, this is gonna look like a sore loser tactic. You lost the battle, you said prove I lost, they prove it, it's not a good look. Now Drake's team is aware that this is gonna make him look terrible, so they stressed, by the way, we're suing the record label. I'm not suing Kendrick Lamar, everybody. I feel like it really doesn't matter. Like, at the end of the day, it should never have been this deep because if you feel like this is defamation, because I feel like that's what he's trying to say, like, you guys did something to defame me or you guys boosted up something that was defaming me, I don't think that's on the record label who essentially is just doing their job and doing something that they would do for any other artist. So I feel like Drake's argument could be very much valid if he had the evidence already. I feel like the petition just looks like a sore loser tactic like he said because you don't have any evidence you don't know that and really from the talk of just the people on social media twitter chats youtubers even the people who do reactions people just organically liked kendrick's song and his whole play in the battle a lot more than they like drake's so he does have a little bit more and i will link this down below if you want to see the rest but basically that is the just the situation now here's my thing i do think that drake is exactly what kendrick was saying in all of his songs like the whole colonizer aspect was a little bit comical but i feel like like when you look at the real nooks and crannies of what he was trying to say, Drake is so quick to run to the laws and run to the courts and run to find some type of litigation against Kendrick. That's what Kendrick said that Drake is and would do or that's just of his character. I feel like his beef really isn't with the label. I just think he wants to find somebody to blame. I feel like maybe some of the things that Kendrick Lamar said were maybe a little bit exaggerated, who knows? But the thing is, you're trying to win public appeal. And if your whole thing is, hey, you did something that ruined my public appeal, but I'm also gonna do something outside of the whole rap thing and do something that literally ruins my public appeal, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Like you're not gonna win either way. I would have rather Drake just take his L and come back, but I do think his career is tainted from this. This is literally like the big bad wolf blew down all the houses, okay? He blew down the six. No offense to nobody from Toronto. I'm just talking about Drake's place. Drake has always been revered in Hollywood, in the media, in entertainment. And the second that he gets a scratch on his record, he's doing all of these things. If you would have told me that Young Money like Young Money, Cash Money, like YMCMB would have been like this back when I was like 12 years old, I would have never believed you because Drake, Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne were on top of the world. And we literally have Lil Wayne kind of going back and forth with Kendrick with the whole Super Bowl performance thing. And it's making Lil Wayne kind of look like, okay, bro, like we get it, you weren't selected, but we're not gonna drag this out, right? Then you have obviously the Drake and Kendrick Lamar. And then there's a lot of people who, maybe they love Nicki's music like I do, but Nicki's personality or Nicki's character, or Nicki's choices sometimes people just don't rock 
rock with it anymore like we used to back in the day. I still love Nikki Down for the music and her impact as a female MC, but I do have to be real, even as a fan, there's certain things I'm just like, all right, I don't rock with this. I don't agree with this. I don't appreciate how she went about this. So it's like YMCMB or just Young Money, this is such a contrast difference from how they were maybe a decade ago. I feel like this has more to do with like Drake internally as an individual. Maybe he is soft. Maybe he really can't take a loss, but that's because he's always been Hollywood's golden boy when it came to music. He's someone that can appeal to different audiences. Like, have y'all noticed that Drake literally acquires a whole different like nationality every single like, what, two years? When he first started, he was your kind of white boy type of look and then he went into hip hop and now he's like an acre you know I don't use the n word on YouTube and then I know he was an afro beats person at one time and then he became Caribbean or Jamaican like he's done so many different things it's kind of like I feel like this is an internal issue with him struggling to see who he is and I think it's interesting because I do talk about race on this channel and sometimes I've had conversations about being mixed race or biracial and some of the struggles that some of those people have and I think this is kind of an example of that where Drake does doesn't necessarily fit in in one place. He fits in in multiple places because he is multiracial. I feel like a lot of this is an identity issue. His card got pulled in so many different ways and he kept poking a bear and that bear bit back. And now he's having an identity crisis of who he is. Maybe not what he is, but who he is maybe to himself and the public. Now we think Drake is one way based on what Kendrick said and some of the evidence that came out. Drake doesn't know if he's coming or going. He doesn't know how people are gonna perceive him. And part of it was like the race thing because Kendrick did talk about that talked about his whole lineage that was crazy but a lot of it also is without Drake being heralded as the best of the best what is Drake He's still talented. He still has great music. He still has a very long and celebrated discography. But with all of this information that we now know, it does put a lot of question marks around Drake. So I do get it. Your reputation is shot, but I don't think it's anybody's fault but Drake. Drake has been doing the same things behind the scenes with Spotify promoting his Scorpion album like profusely. And he's also always talked about how big and bad he is when it comes to his own label or just his placement in hip hop. So now that we see Drake for all of these different things that we never knew before where we've been perceiving him one way and now we know there's an alleged daughter out there now we know that he has this affinity with younger women now we know things that are somewhat nefarious right it does make us question that but is that Kendrick's fault is that UMG's fault no Drake that's your fault see everybody in life has choices and I feel like Drake had the choice to not poke at Kendrick but also even if he did just win but you didn't win and that's what this is about you're a sore loser your ego is shot and now you're trying to find ways to rebuild that I don't think going Going to the courts to petition for UMG to show the person or reveal the person who amped up Kendrick Lamar's streams when we all know that that was like a cultural moment for hip hop. The whole rap battle was a cultural moment for hip hop. I mean, it was viral. Everybody talked about it. The fans listened to the song. I know I played it a lot. I know I was trying to figure out how to do dances. I think if Drake would just kind of stop being so in disbelief that he can be taken down and actually have a little bit more humility, he would see that. Overall, this whole thing to me is very interesting and I'm very interested to see how far this goes. Obviously, Drake's team knows that this is a bad look and I know Drake knows this is a bad look, but I really wanna see, does he have the ability to simmer down his ego and just take the L? That's all I want him to do is hold this L. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If y'all haven't already, make sure you guys check out my vlog channel. It is always pinned down below. So check that comment. I am traveling to Georgia in what? a week or two, a week and a half. So I'm gonna be in Atlanta for like almost a month. And I am really excited because I get to do some fun things that I have planned and I get to vlog it all. So you guys will have a new vlog during the holiday season as well. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media networks and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all. in a bucha. me these spicy, juicy, baby, call me suya. I said 24 seven, we stacking, racking. I'm a bad bitch, you fraction, lacking. Counting bread while he playing Madden. I'm in the building, bitch, what's happening? Queen Chama pure status back. I'm really a vet, these joints need practice. Running circles around them, we laughing. QTM girls like camera action. Wanna book the girls, you need a thousand Andrew Jackson. Out of